All right. So, one more thing we're going to be doing. I'll show you how this, the whole process. So, this has strange front brakes in it. Strange front struts. They don't make a wheel speed sensor that you can bolt onto this. So, we're going to make our own. process with you basically what's gonna happen is I bought a second hub so I could start machining it this is gonna get machined down I'm gonna make a ring that goes over this and it'll be this will be machined down to about here so that it's flat a ring is gonna I'm gonna machine one ring that's gonna go over it and hopefully I can bolt it down to it or I'm going to have to make the ring and then um, lock tight it with like a press fit. But I'm hoping I can make it so it comes off. And then I'll make it enough where it's got enough clearance so I can get the studs out, bolt it down. And then I'm going to make a tone ring that goes over it. And you put little tiny uh, number 10 button head little bolts down on it. And... The bolts go through the tone ring, and then you use this sensor like this, and the sensor picks up as the tone ring goes around. The sensor will pick up the little studs. So we got to degree that in 360. You need uh, 18 of them. So what's going to happen is it'll the tone ring it'll be about a little bit bigger than this. So. Once that's on here, the tone ring will bolt through. A whole, hopefully, I can bolt everything down on it, and then make a hole in the so in the back of the bracket. I'll be able to make a hole back there and be able to put the sensor through and line everything up. And you'll see how that goes. So, I'm gonna make our own speed sensor so that we can have front and back rear. We have a rear wheel speed already with the dry shaft. Now we'll have front wheel speed with this sensor. Um, and then with the Holly ECU, you, once that's all programmed in, you can actually program traction control. So hopefully this will all work out and you'll see how it works. All right, so this already got machined down. Let's see, we machined that right there. I'm gonna take this aluminum Right, this is quarter inch thick. I'm gonna make a ring that goes on this hub. All right, so find in the center of that, okay? Uh, let's see if you can see that. So that's the middle. I'm gonna make a hole there later. Right now, I'm just gonna cut this out. This all the way around. Very slow process. Gotta be close. And then I'll put it on the lathe. This piece made up. I'm gonna make the hole in that. Clean it up, make sure it's nice and round. And then we'll chuck it in the vise, I mean in the uh, lathe. Pop the center out and make it to the right size. All right, so made a little hole, pilot hole, stepped it up, stepped it up again. So we got a half inch hole. Gonna put a half inch bolt in there, bolt it on, put it in the lathe. Okay.
Okay, now we got that set in there. Got a spacer, spacer, nut. I'm gonna mill this down until it's nice and clean. Then I'll center that and then make the hole on the inside. All machine, but it works nice. Gonna take enough off, just enough off to clean it up. Yep, got a little more to go. Finish it up. Alright, so first part is done. Nice and smooth, nice and round. I'm gonna take that back out. I'm gonna chuck this into the chuck and then make the hole in the middle. Right, so now we're cutting this part, the inside. going to take a while. Very slow process. But we're getting there. I'm going to keep making a hole bigger and bigger. Right, so, got the ring made up. Nice, perfect fit, not pressed. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna make it come off. So what I did was I marked, I got a measurement of there in the center. I marked it, I set the lathe up, made it go around, got a little mark on it. Then I got a little mark on this. And then I drilled for a number eight drill bit, I drilled the five holes to line up with these and then I put that on there and drilled through and made those five holes and now what I'm doing is where is it so I'm tapping them okay little number eight deal and then what I'll, once those are tapped what I'm gonna do is this hole I'm gonna flip this around, make the big, bigger ring that goes on here. Drill that so they all match, so everything matches the same way. And then I'll drill this one and the ring a slight, whatever size, next size up, bigger. And then I'll use a little number eight button head bolt to go through both this, the ring and this, and bolt to that. And that's how the, both pieces will get held on. This way they could come off. All right. So all those little number eights are tapped. And I just got to make sure we got this lined up. Like that. All the holes line up. Now I got to make the other tone ring. And then at the end, I'll make uh, the clearance for the head of the whatever you want to call it this titanium so if these were steel bolts you can almost run you'd have to I, I don't know how you calculate that one I guess there is a way to calculate it but you can run the sensor off of the each head of each bolt which can't do that with titanium because it doesn't make a contact okay here we go making the next piece all right, so got the next piece cut out on a bandsaw. Same thing. I made a center mark on it right there. We're going to make a hole, set it up the same way, put it back in the thing, make a hole in it. And this one is going to be a little bit bigger than that. 
and then I'm gonna take the rotor off and cut it down to whatever size I need it all right all right so the lathe the chuck doesn't open up enough to get this ring in it so what I did was I flipped it over onto here put it back in the drill press all right centered that made holes in that and then I'll be able to clamp this I'm gonna bolt this thing together clamp this in the chuck and then make that hole match this hole so that is gonna match this and then I'm gonna tap these so I can bolt it together first and then when I'm done I'm gonna drill through to the next size so both of these pieces will bolt onto that all in one shot all right so got those holes drilled now I'm gonna take this piece off I'm gonna tap this 832 so that I could bolt this to this all right so I got those holes all tapped and then I ran a number 17 bit through there all right that made that nice and tight so now I'm going to bolt this to this. Okay. So I go to the hardware store. I buy all the bolts I need. And I guess I missed one. But I'll go back for that later. Alright, so anyway. Got that bolted onto that. Now if I was going to do this over again, honestly, I'd probably just make this one piece. Make it this thick. And then just machine it to look like that rather than having two pieces, but whatever. Got to do what you got to do and what I can only do at this point. All right, so I'm going to put this back up in there. And machine the hole out. All right, so we got that opened up with the hole saw. Still got a little, probably another quarter inch or so to go, so I'm going to fine tune it with that. All right, so... I got that hole. Now I put this other cutter on it. Try to get it as close as I could to that. So got that exact to the inside. So now we got a nice clearance. It'll fit real nice. I'm gonna take this off. Now I gotta figure out, put this on, see how much I gotta cut. I trued this up, but I gotta see how much of this I can leave on here. I'm pretty sure the size is okay. I'm gonna make sure it fits inside the rotor. And then I'm gonna put the sensor in here where it goes, mark it, put a scribe mark all the way around. And then we'll be able to uh, degree it in and put the little holes in it. All right, so that's all done. That's nice. This is going to fit on here. All right. I'm going to take the bolts out, but that fits on there. Nice, like that. Nice and flush. Now what I got to do is take these bolts back out, and then these are tapped. So now those are going to get cleared with the same drill bit, and then they'll only screw into that. I'm going to take those back out, drill those, then mount everything to this, and then mark my holes where I got a clearance for the wheel stud. All right, so took a little bit more off of that. Got enough clearance now. It's good because it sits about here. So next thing is I'm going to, let's see. 
Well, I guess I got to take this off, mount it to this, take the other hub off, put this hub on, and figure out where the sensor is going to sit. All right, so I got the other hub off, got this one on with the ring on it. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make I'm going to make all my 18 holes in this thing. I'm going to clearance the inside one for the head of the bolts, right? And then once the holes are made, then I'll stick something in here, mark the back of this plate, take the plate off, and we'll make a hole in the plate, and the, this sensor will go through the plate and basically sit like this and be able to get the, get the reading off it. All right. Now I'm not going to mess. I was going to try to mount that on the front, but... Mm, nah, I'm just gonna make that. So I'm gonna center the ten number ten bolt with the little hex heads on there. They're gonna stick out a hundred thousands or so on this side, and then the center will have like a I believe it's a fifty thousands gap. I gotta check again. All right, so I'm gonna take this back off and do that. Giving it a final cut here. So I cut the relief in it. All right. I cut that relief in it to clear that. All right, and that's it. So I'll clean that thing up, and then clean the edges of it up. Check it. All right. So that's done. And it's got good clearance right through there. So that's going to sit like that. All the bolts will line up. All right, so now we got, we're making it so we changed the plan a little bit here, but this is going to work good. So that'll work. And then this ring goes on there. Now we got to index this. So I'm going to mount this up on the car and see where I could put the uh, sensor and then index this thing out. All right. So I put this on the lathe. I made a scribe mark all the way around where I want the bolts to be. And then I'm using a little degree wheel. It's actually a camshaft degree wheel, small one. Centered it. And then I marked it at every 20 degrees. So that's going to be the marks. <clears throat> I'm going to drill them out <clears throat> with a number 21. All right. And then we're going to use a 1032 little button head screw from the back. And it'll protrude out to get the signal. All right, let me make these holes. Let me tap that. And then this all has to be put together, put on, put on the car. And then mark the mark on this to mark where the sensor has to go. All right, so I got this drill bit set up in here. I'm going to do it on the milling machine. I chuck that up in there and make sure this is nice and straight. And then every 20 degrees, every 20 degrees is going to get a hold. All right. All right. So what I did was I put a stop here and a stop there. This way this can just go in and it'll always have the same amount of room, right? It'll always line up with that. So if I bring the quill down. It lines up dead on there, and then all I got to do is look at it from this side and make sure I got my my little. Let me see if you could see those those little dots. 
lined up and then I can make the holes so with this setup I know it's going to be exact right on the money all right all right I'm halfway around let's see if I could do one on camera here Get the idea. I gotta find my stand so I can set the camera up. All the holes made. Just taking the little burrs off. I think I was only off on the one. That sucks. But should work. So I'm gonna put all this back together, go set it in the car, and then I'll mark where this goes, where this lines up with the bracket, take the bracket off, make a hole in the bracket, put a sensor, and now we're done. Clearance it, make sure it's got the right gap. I gotta look it up, I think it was 50,000, but I don't remember. So I'll, I'll check that. And then we should be done. All right, I'll let you know what next part. All right, well, that video part didn't come out, but I put it on, and then I stuck a little Allen key through the hole, or one of the holes that we're gonna put a stud through, and mark the bracket. Okay, so I took this apart. I'm gonna make a hole in that. I'm gonna mount this through it. This has a two set screw, uh, two set nuts, one on each side of it. So right now we're just gonna make a hole there with this little pinhole, right? So I'm gonna make it with that same size and then put a drift pin, and put this back together, put a drift pin through it, make sure it lines up with the other holes. If not, we can make different holes and adjust it till it's in the right spot. Because the way it's set up, it's hard to actually get in there. I'll show you when I put it back together. All right. I think it lines up pretty good. So, let's line up like that. Not bad for a schmuck. All right. Now I can make that hole the size of the sensor. Start putting it back together. All right, so here's the bracket. This, I already had this wired, so this is all done. Heat shrink on it to protect it. And the one that I was using for measurements and stuff, I'm gonna keep that for a spare, because this sensor is the same as the rear speed dry shaft sensor. Same setup. Okay, so now this is gonna go in here. This has the locking nuts to set it in place. So I'm gonna put it back together, set the depth on it, make sure the clearance is right, uh, I gotta check on the, I keep forgetting to check, I gotta look up the clearance, I believe it's 50,000. Alright, let me look that up, and then I'm gonna put this back together, and I'll let you know what it looks like. Okay, so, I forgot to do something. So, that lines up, I gotta take this back off, 
I got to tap all these holes. So these 18 holes got to get all tapped. I got to put the studs back in it, take them off of that one, put them in this one, and then put the bearings and the seal and all that stuff in this one. Then I could set it up. Well, all the machining's done. This is only part of it. The other part I threw out. Yeah, buddy. All right, so we took this back all apart. And got all these holes all tapped. 1032. I'm using a bag of these. You put all those in there. And the gap is like 40 to 50, he's telling me. All right, so I'm going to put all these in here, tighten them all down. Make sure there's no burrs on the end of anything. I'll clean them up. And then it should be good. I can put it all back together. Final fit. Not bad. So that looks good. Those are all in. Cleaned up all the edges of the nuts, or the bolts rather. And we're good to go. Put it back together. Stick it back on there. All right, so that's what it looks like. Got clearance there with that little step. All the holes, 20 degrees. I used stainless ones on that so they don't rust. And then these, I just got to keep up with them because these black things, they rust. Well, put a little kind of oily film or something on them to keep them clean. All right, we put it back together, and then that goes in like that. Got a nut on both sides. All right. Okay, so put this back together. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finally done. All right. So there's the sensor. That's all tightened up. Let's see if you can see it. All right. Right there, lined up nice. Beautiful. I am so happy that this is done. I'm glad it all came out good. It looks like everything good. I checked the clearances. The clearances are good all the way around. I got 46 thousandths in it right now. So it's supposed to be between 40 and 50, and then we can always adjust it a little tighter or a little looser. But I think that's probably where it's going to end up staying. Let me uh, put the brake caliber back on. I already made up the harness inside the car, so this is just gonna go to here, like that. Nice plug on the end of it, gets plugged in and it's done. Okay. See if you can see that from behind. Go around this side, that's all back together. Uh, like that. All right, nice clean. Very nice. Came out nice. Well, there you go. Front wheel speed sensor. Once I get the uh, the engine and everything back in the car, we bring it up to Rob's. I'll have it all plugged in, ready, and then we'll just program it into the car. I'll have it on a um, on and off switch in the computer, so it could be turned on, turned off, uh, so we could data log the front to back. Use it as traction control and everything else. All right. Uh, just so we you put it on this side rather than the other side, because when the car leaves, it's either going to pick both wheels up, which this will catch it. Or it'll pick that wheel up, but then it'll slow everything down. This wheel's usually skipping the ground a little bit. So, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave some comments, let me know what you think. And if you need any help making one, let me know.